Nou, een paar mensen op je spot zit. Uh, wie is bezoekers in hierdie kerk voor de eerste keer? Steek je handen op. Oh, Monai en Adel. <laughs> My kinders. <laughs> Al die pad van Kempton Park af. Baie welkom jylle hoor. Dat is great om jullie te... Ek het um, met Jan op WhatsApp gepraat. De vraag kwam, hoe gaan het? Toe sê, jy wil nie weet nie. Haar soveel hygoes nie. Hulle moet beer te neem om in die swembad in te klop. <laughs> Nog een bezoeker hier so. Baie welkom. Baie welkom. Ek hoop nie die goed is te strange in die kerk vir julle nie. Nee, dat is goed. Maar jy weet, uh, vergevingsgezondheid is ook goed. <laughs> Daar achter by Mornay hulle, steek jou hand op Mornay. Die chocolate aan is myne, na die dienst as het lief. Daar sê. Um, ja, uh, voor ek begin, als net een of twee goed. Um, ek het vroeger in die dienst, of voor die dienst het ek met Scotty gepraat. Hier het iets op sy hart geleid, dus ook om die ek die kruis ook nader gebring het in die nachtmaal. Uh, jy kan daar sit, ek gaan gauw vir jou bring, Scotty. Ok, nou kom, Scotty. Dit is my broer hierdie. Gaan jy klim ook, of nie? <laughs> uh, Goeiemorgen allemaal. Ek het so paar dingetjes om vir jy te vertel. Ek eerst wil my vroukie vraag om op te staan, asjeblief. Ek kan sê, jy is woensdag, woensdag, 43 jaar getrouwd. En ek wil net vast sê, my vrou, baie dank, is die tweede keer wat jy my kom haal, dat my oor oopmaak, na ek amper dood was, en staan nie, wat ek was dood, en staan nie by my. Ek is baie lief vir jou oor, dankie vir alles, wat deer jou. Amen. Dan die, die, die volgende, die volgende ding, ek was uitgenooi, saterdag na die uh, speciale machte, braai gewees. En um, ek kom daar aan, ek sit as paar van man een week herken, en uh, ek sit daar en praat, die volgende oomlik krij ek een skouwer groet, en hy ouds heeft my, ja, Scotty, Scotty was my naam waar ek opgewerk het. Ek draai om, ek sien nie gezicht, maar ek het my gedink, ek kom sêk aan met 30, 27 jaar laat gesien, en ek sê vir myself, Heere, wat soek hy hier so? en toe ek moet om deel hoor ek wat die Heere sy leven gemaakt het, en ek wil die Heere eergeer, daar sit van een harde man, en daar is ander, hy sê, wat dan ook ons spijkers eet, wat allemaal in pad met die Heere stap, en ek gee die Heere al die eer daarvoor, maar vir oogend drie uur maak die Heere my wakker, uh, ek, speel, ek word elke oogend drie wakker, en ek sit my muziek in my oore, en ek, die geest vat my jent allemaal weg, ek, ek voel, ek wil my vrou wakker maak, maar sy word al kwaad vir my, sy kan die oogend drie uur wakker maak, en ek voel die taal ook kom, en ek praat met die Heere, van Heere, wat is my boodskap vir oogend? Die Heere wees my die kruis, die kruis, daar is die kruis, en Heere wees my, as ons voor die kruis gaan staan, en as ons hoort wat sê, aan Bennett nie, sy wil kom, en aan nie wat buig hek kom, en die Heere sê, verneder my voor jou, ek weet nog nie waar staan die pastoor, maar staan nog leer, en dit is skrif, ek weet dit staan in die skrif, En die Heere sê, kom by my voete, kom by my voete. En hoe kan jy by die Heere sy voete kom? Jy moet nie, jy moet buig. So die Heere sê van oog af julle, julle ons moet begin meer buig, aan sy voete kom, want die Heere sê, dankie Heere, maar op sy voete, laat hy jy kon sien met sy hande. Baie dankie julle, ek wat die André de Kok, kom hier so asjeblief. Dis ook om ons sê, André de Kok, en André Olivier, en André Marie, want ons is volop. Hierdie boete wil iets doen. Ek wil nie van André sê, ek en André het so, wat kan mense doen? Een verskil gehad. Wat André vraag, André vergewe my, jy is my broer, baie lief vir jou. Jy wil haar kom, Asjeblief, jy is my broer en liefde. Baie dankie, André. Jy my dank jy. Nou kan ons huis toe gaan. Because that's what it's all about. Ek is trots op al twee van jylle. Prijs die jylle. Nog net een taakie voor ek my woord bedien. 
Daai kruis het ons die begin van hierdie jaar name opgesit van geliefdes, familie, wat ons weet nie die Heere ken nie of nie op pad met die Heere stap nie. En ons vertrouwen is dat die Heere een ommekeer in die mensense leven sal bring. He died that nobody should be lost. So die mens op die kruis is vir hom verskrikkelijk belangrijk. Kan ek vraag dat allemaal die handen uitreik naar die kruis toe vir my en sê, Abba, Vader, Heere, my God, ons spreek tot die mens as een geestmens, Heere, en ons roep hulle in die koninkryk in, Heere. Heere, u die volle prijs betaal. We don't know how much it cost you, Lord, but we know you gave everything. So, Heere, ons roep hulle in, en ons sê, Heere, seen die families, Heere, wat hulle naam op die kruis gesit het, moet nie laat hulle moeg en mat word om te bid vir hulle nie, Heere, en Heere, ons roep die mense in die koninkryk in, ons roep hulle getuienisse in, soos ons pas gesien het verochend, in Jesus naam. Amen. Goed, nou gaan ek oorslaan Engels toe, want ek neem hierdie um, preek op, en dan gaan het op die ding wat is YouTube en die type van goed, so uh, met julle toestemming gaan ek die Britse taal praat. <laughs> Scott, is het jy? <laughs> Sondag staan ek en jy weer hiervoor. <laughs> nee, maar dat is recht. Um, ek het een ander preek voor op bereid vir geoogend. En so donderdagmiddag sê die heren vir my, hierdie sondag moet ek hierdie preek lever, wat ek saamgestel het. En ek weet, dis vir iemand in die gemeente vir oogend, talk meer as een, talk mense wat op Zoom is. En ek wil net vir jou sê, ek het een pad met die Heere gestap vir baie jare. En ek het al die goed wat traditie vereis, en kultuur vereis, en pakke vereis, en thais, en al die type van goed. Maar ek sê vir jou, toe ek rarig ontmoeting met die Heere gehad het, op die stadium, so ek reg het al toe gegaan het. So, ons kan nie dink, en moet nooit dink, ons het gearriveer, en ons weet als wat die Heere met ons wil doen hee. So anlangs, as ek dink twee, drie weke terug, het ek jou vertel die getuinis met die stelse gebreekte been, waar die Heere vir my dier haar been, na voet wat gebreek is, goed vir my goed openbaar het. Daar is het Don vir ochend, hy was die master chief van die Dogs of War, harde baard manne, hulle hier ingebring in hierdie gemeente in. Sondag het ons met Willem hier gesit en gepreek, die maandag is hy dood, die woensdag te begrawe ek om. You never know when it's your last day. Ongeacht jou ouderdom. So daar is nie meer tyd vir plastic nie. Nee? Jy moet plastic chirurgie doen. Snij dit af, gooi dit weg. This brings me to my sermon this morning. And the topic of my sermon is death. Do it. Wow. Hoe kan ek nou hier by kerswees oor so iets wil preek? Death, dying, expiration, wat, daar sê jy, gaan jy altemal dood, man. What is that all about? Now, normally, uh, the, one of the tasks of the uh, elders in front, we make notes so to see how we can improve our services. Maar koop, ek sê nou al vir jou, gaan nie nou al die tekstvers noem nie, maar gaan hem noem later aan. Want ons, in hierdie kerk, ons bly nie by, by traditie nie, want ons kom by alles uit. So, Wees net saam met my en dink een bykie aan dit wat die Heere al vir julle gewees het. Wat sy dood krij jy? Jy krij een fysische dood? Jy krij een geestelike dood? En vir oogend praat ek nie van een van die twee dode. Nou wat sy dood praat ek nou van? Dis, ek dink die dood is ook nie soos die stels al vlees wat hy is ons braai nie. Want sy sê hy moet dood wees. Maar ek praat van dood vir oogend. Een dood wat lewe bring. Het dood wat ons allemaal nodig het, het dood wat voor dieren gaan plaasvind, en het dood wat leven bring. En ek gaan nou nou kamstag dood gaan hier op die verhoog, te, om te illustreren wat ik bedoel daarbij. So kom ons begin. Life happens sometimes. Nee? You, you, you get married, you have kids, you start to work, and then you get this contract, you get that contract, or you are transferred overseas, or the kids go overseas, and you, yeah, life happens. You lose your job, 
you get sick, there's financial pressures, uh, there's corruption, there's potholes, there's ESCOM, and all of these things play a role on our lives. Now, how does that impact on you? Does it impact positively? Does it impact negatively? What does it do? We see sometimes leaders that are appointed that we question. Why are these leaders appointed? Why are these leaders saying these things? Um, income tax goes up and petrol prices go up. Life happens. It's a fact. People get sick. People die. People get divorced. People will get all types of sickness. Young children, old children. There's animosity. There's division. How do we deal with this when life happens? Now, the basis as Christians that we should have, I want to use as an introduction the parable of the sower. You know there's death in the parable of the sower. Jesus gave the parable of the sower. We all know that parable. But then the disciples went to him and said, Jesus, explain to us what this parable means. So Jesus explained the parable. So there's no, some of the parables, you've got to think what Jesus meant. But in this parable, he says to you exactly what the word means. Now remember what I said about life happens. Let's go and see what the word of God says. In Matthew 13, it says, Jesus says, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away that was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. That seed dies. It does not germinate. That happened to me. I heard the word I get the elder in the kerk geword, all die dinge. But at that stage, if I had died, I would have gone to hell. I promise you. I know what I'm talking about. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word, at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. In our family, in our family, we have, a, 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 on, on Estelle's side, a person who was a duomini, and his son went to be a duomini. And he turned his back on the Lord while studying to be a duomini. He said, no, this is just a myth, this thing. His two daughters, Anae and Carla, both accepted the Lord in that house. Now that they are older, they're saying, no, they're turning their back on the Lord. Those are typically the people that are on the cross. Because my God says he will finish the good work that was started. That's, that's my prayer. That's what I believe. But you see the, the similarity with the seed. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, that the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. Once again, I think the devil knows the word better than all of us. He's been around for a couple of centuries. You want to keep someone in our church, bless him abundantly with finances. He buys a boat, a jet ski, a Harley Davidson, and all of those things, and he's on the dam on a Sunday. Doesn't come to church. Think about it. Think about it. That the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word, he understands it, and this is the one who produces a crop, yielding 160 or 30 times more than that what was sown. In God's kingdom, we talk about multiplication, not interest, multiplication. What happens in a lot of the mega churches today, and please, I'm not banging them, you can go and have a look yourself. In a lot of the mega churches today, they only preach prosperity. It's only you claim it and you name it and you claim it and it's prosperity from the beginning to the end. They don't talk about death. They don't talk about sin. 
They talk about prosperity only. That's not the way I understand the scriptures. God says he will be with you when you go through the Brandon at wind, when you go through the lion's den, when you face cancer and you're sitting next to your husband's bed or your wife's bed and they're dying of cancer, or when your child is dying of cancer, he will be with you. Or you can turn your back on him and say, if you are God of love, why are you doing this? Like my father did. When four, five of my brothers and sisters died at a young age. Or you can say, my God, despite what is happening, I will love you. I will follow you. I will trust you. The choice is yours. But I want to caution you. Don't be low vara, my friend. Don't be lukewarm. If you want to be cold, be cold. If you want to be hot, be hot. But don't. There's no time to be lukewarm anymore. The Lord will spit you out. Listen to me. M make your decision what you want to do. How many times have you heard people saying, I want to see Jesus. I'm one of them. I want to see Jesus. I want his presence. I want to see his glory. I want to say the following. Really? Without it costing you anything? Do you think it's a McDonald's, a drive through We sang this morning one of the songs that Judah played. I never know how much it cost to see my Lord on the cross. It's going to cost you something. When David wanted to build an altar to the Lord, Somebody wanted to give him a piece of ground for nothing. He says, no, it's got to cost me something. It's got to cost me something. When David collected all of the gold, they said the gold and the silver at that time was so common. It was more common than stones, gold and silver. They had so much tons of gold to build the temple. And despite that, David gave out of his own wealth tons of gold to the Lord. It cost him something, personally. It's going to cost you. Dying is going to cost you. Make, make no mistake. You see, the word says, you have to take up your cross daily. Those of you who have seen the passion of the Christ, and you see Jesus being whipped to pieces, and carrying that cross to Calvary, it cost him everything. And you want to be like Jesus? It's going to cost you. Please believe me, it's going to cost you. But it's worth it. Except for you, this varied. I want to share this just a little quickly. I told you in one home cell, when we were still in Kempton Park, this lady that came there, I didn't know her, I didn't know where she heard from the, of the home cell. And what we normally do, we put a chair in the middle and we, the body serves the body. And she was stuck in man. And she kerk wat haar stuk in gemaakt het. And I, I kneeled before her and I prayed for her. And the Lord showed me his love. That like a camera shot up. Milliseconds. If it was more, you'll be consumed of this love, this God that we worship and praise. It's worth it. Philippians 1.21 for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. It's worth it. For to me, living means living for Christ, and dying is even better. I'm not saying it. The Word of God is saying it. And the Word of God is yes and amen. I'm coming to my actual text verse now. Luke 14, 27. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple.
There's so much in us, no matter where you are, in your walk with the Lord that has to die. So much of the fallen life is in us. We must become less so that Christ can become more in us. We were born in this fallen life. And we still have portions of this in us, the flesh. You know, you don't have to teach a child to be naughty. Have you seen that? You don't teach him to be naughty. You've got to teach him to be good. Etienne and my other son is there at the back. And his wife, Chantelle, she's pregnant, very pregnant, with Leah, a daughter. And my other daughter is also sitting there, Shiloh. She was christened, what say you, gedoop, klein gedoop in die kerk. What a privilege. Three generations. Yeah, this morning. Jy ook ook weer. Drie generaties volgen. Is it nie wonderlik nie? Thank you, Lord. So we don't have to teach children to be naughty. They do it automatically. Ek kan onthou, hy man is groter as ek vandag, but they sit in that baby chair. Dan vat hulle die purity so, want hulle wil self. Self. Vat hulle die purity so, dan check hulle jou so. Is it? No, 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 no. I'm going to teach you to be good. Don't do that. Okay. Kids do it automatically. And you know what? Sometimes we do that as well. You cannot take an old, old wild wine skin. The word says so. You can't take an old wine skin and just patch it and put new wine in there. That refers to your life as well. You can't take your life and want to live it the way you want to live it and just put some icing sugar over it. Whatever you think, before you think it, the Lord knows it. Before you say something, the Lord, you can't hide from him. You can hide from your husband, from your spouse, from the church. You can hide from everybody. You cannot hide from the Lord Jesus Christ. He knows every thought. He knows the hairs on your head. So you've got to start being genuine. There's so much more in us that has to die. We were born in this fallen world. Now, we cannot take an old wine skin, like I said to you. Why? Think about this. If you want to take an old wine skin and you come to church and you just do all of the church stuff. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hello, my brother. How can it with you? Have a nice day. But when you get to the office on Monday or you get to your house with your wife, it's a different story. Why? I'm identifying areas where you need to die. You need to die. To die to self is the complete giving away of your life. Piece by piece every single day. Those areas beyond your comfort zone. Things that are within your comfort zone is easy. But the things beyond your comfort zone. Scotty, was it makkelijk geweest om te doen wat je vanochtend gedaan hebt? Nee, but you did it. You died to self this morning. And I praise you. I honor you for what you did. Instead of seeing the person as your opponent in the struggle, you need to see Jesus standing in front of you. And you need to ask, what would Jesus do in this instance now? When me and Estelle have woorden, she helps me by saying, I'm not your opponent. I'm your wife. And it brings me back to the ground with a thud with a thud. Want ek weeg twee keer so veel, so sy, my maag is groter, en al die lekke dinge. So I want to dominate her. And she says, I'm not your opponent. I'm your wife. 
And you told me you love me. What are you doing, Andre Ernest Olafi? And then I die to self. And I say, sorry. You have to die every day, a thousand times a day, if you want to follow Jesus. That taxi that drives in front of you, you have to die and say, Lord, I pray for those people in the taxi. I know it has to be done. When the power goes off, and I check seven the lawn, I cake the cake at him on any case. <laughs> and the quiet. You have to die to self. You see, my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, experienced that as well. He came to this earth with a specific purpose and plan. And in Gethsemane, when he saw what the Father wants him to do, to be crucified on the cross, he sweated blood. He said, no, Lord, take this cup away from me. And then he died to self. And he said, not my will, but your will be done, Lord. He had to die to self. The physical death of his human body was still coming. You see, we need to say yes to the Holy Spirit that guides us, that prompts us, that our spiritual senses are opened, that we can hear as the Holy Spirit guides us. So even when we are facing trials and tribulations, then we are reminded of James 1 verse 1. Consider it pure joy when you encounter trials and tribulations. And only once we get to that point, James being the half-brother of Jesus, knew what he was talking about. We need to get to a point that when we experience these trials, these temptations, that's to build us. It's to make us to die to self, to become more like Jesus Christ. It's a lifelong job. It's not a once-off. You see, many times in order to do that, you need to give up your dreams, your aspirations, your job. It can bring hardships. But if that's what the Lord's calling you to do, you need to die. You see, you need to say, Father God, I will serve you even if no one else goes with me. Even if my family and friends call me crazy, like in the Muslims. If they accept the Lord Jesus Christ, their family, everybody rejects them. And I'm the only one in my family serving you. God, I will do it. I will serve you even if it though means death to myself even if it means death on the cross. But you need to count the costs. Now, can I do a drum roll? Brrr, do I have your attention? You're going to face massive encounters. And the biggest enemy you're going to face is yourself. Your biggest enemy dying to self is yourself. Because you and you and you and me have to make this decision. That's your biggest enemy. Show me my heart, Lord. Show me my heart. Het ek a fark in my heart teen oor iemand of teen oor iets. Help me identify these areas, Lord. If there's unforgiveness, Lord, help me that I can fix that. God's word is yes and amen. You need to forgive. If you do not forgive, God cannot forgive you. It's scripture. If you see what happens when man and frau character come, what happens? They have a fight in the car before they get to church. Go and read 1 Peter. 
if the husband doesn't treat his wife properly, God can't hear his prayers. The enemy knows that. And he brings these, these divisions, these separations amongst us. And that's when you need to die. That's when you need to die. Every day we need to check our heart. I have to tell myself daily, and I promise you I've been singing this song, Show Me My Heart, Lord, for the last year, asking the Lord to show me. And then my wife goes and breaks her bone in her leg, and he shows me two things out of that. Her pain, her, her bone shows me two things. So when you pray for something and you trust the Lord, it can be anus sometimes. We need to pick up our cross daily. We need to count the cost. And if you're not prepared to do this, if you're not prepared to say sorry, if you're not prepared to die to certain things, then let me caution you. There could be pride in your life. And let me tell you what the Bible says about prideful people. He resists them. Can you see how serious this thing is? Can you see how serious this thing is? If the Lord shows you areas in your life that you still need to die to, and you don't do that, you could be prideful. And if you are prideful, the Lord will resist you. I'm not saying that. This, the word says that. Let us then get rid of anything and everything that is causing a lack of vulnerable transparency relationship with Jesus so we can share everything with him and him with us. Make sure there's nothing between you and Jesus. Make sure that we are real, authentic, and vulnerable, that we have no agendas, we have no ambitions, but only the will of the Father. Our aim is to serve Jesus and each other and to glorify him. Please listen to me. No man must ever take God's glory. It's his and his alone. We have been created to glorify God. And these things are scripture. This is another important announcement in the sermon this morning. So can I ask, please pay attention to this. Am I standing in front of you this morning saying this is easy? Because anybody that stands up in church today and says, oh, this is not a problem, this is easy. I want to tell you, you've never died to self. Because I'm telling you, it's not easy. And I'm telling you, it's a lifelong thing. And I'm also telling you, it's, it's worth it. It's worth every single effort that you put in. Luke 14, verse 28 and 29 talks about counting the cost. This actually means that to be Jesus' disciples, we must count the cost in dedicating our lives to him and make sure that we are willing to pay it. How many times when we dedicate a child, we make promises in front of the, the whole church. We will, we will rear this child in the fear of the Lord and we will do this and we will do this. Go and measure those promises. Or if you stand for the council and you're in your throat, throw. All the promises you make and the pledges that you make, go and measure your marriage against that. And you will find there's areas that you still need to die to. Not a physical death, not a spiritual death. You see, entering God's kingdom is free. It's mahala, costs you nothing. That being a useful citizen takes sacrifice by dying to I, to me, to myself. Well, I, this means you must consider how the consequences of that decision is going to affect your life. Because it will. You will lose friends. You will lose family. We have been created to glorify God in the flesh while we are still on earth. But it's going to cost you something may even cost you everything. You see, you can make decisions and excuses, or you can even decide, no, I'm not going to die anymore. I'm dead enough. Or you can decide to put on the full armor of God and fight the fight daily to the glory of our King. God has given you and me a free will. Steady.
Jy moet die boek kom staan. Oké. Okay. Kom staan hier so, laat ons op zoom is. Talk to me. André, ek beplan vir ons een heerlijke vakantie. Ons gaan nice na toe. Men, when I plan holidays, me and myself, when I plan holidays, man, we're not going to nice, we're going to the States. Do I have a say? No, I'm having this meeting with me, myself, and I. Okay, let me try something else. You know we have a month anniversary coming up, and I'm planning something. No, 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 no. This one I'm planning. Uh, this month anniversary thing, um, I think I'm going to do it. And I'll talk to myself, and uh, I'll let you know what we've decided. I give up. Okay, because you've given up, allow me to die. Myself. Can I plan that holiday and month anniversary again? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> when you die to self, you die to that situation. That is what happens. You swallow your pride and you say, Lord, I'm going to keep quiet. I'm going to honor you. And I'm going to deal with this in a different way to what I've been dealing with it before. So the death I've been talking about this morning is death to self. And although the topic sounds bad, it's good. It gives you life. It gives you breakthrough. It honors God our Father. And this is what we all need to do. Is it not so? Can we all say this morning, show me my heart, Lord. And this that the Lord shows you is what you will go and deal with. You see, this is your fight. When my daughter had cancer, we said, Chance, this is your fight. It's your fight. But we're going to fight this fight with you. We all shaved their hair. When I didn't have to do it in Etienne because the hair is clar -clar. But we shaved their hair in support of my daughter. When you bring something to the light, it loses its power. That's why the word says, confess your sins to one another. Maar as jy dit weghou, dan kom jy vijand jou by. Jy stel, got a tweeling sissie, sy is die mooier een van die twee. Maar as het a tweeling sissie, Esme, in Nelspreid, sy is a volsla, akkoel is. Vol sla, soos in serious alcohol is. Nee, ek, ek nerd sy vat die nou en dan nie. She went to rehab, it went good, sy het teruggeval. And we went to Nelspreid, because Estelle's mom fell and hurt her back, we went to go support her. And Estelle got an inspiration, I think, from the Holy Spirit, because the word says, all good things can come from the throne room of guys. Ne? Back Esme. Back Esme. Jy weet hierdie back body type van goed? Back is my. And everybody in the family had to not drink anything. I'm talking about now drank, wijn, branne wijn, whisky, gin, wat ook al hy goed. Nou die dag sien ek een ding op a menu shooters, ek weet nie wat het is, jy wil kemer gaan skieties, so, dit is oorlog. <laughs> but in any case, you must see the positive reaction that has happened by being obedient to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Estelle and I, you know what we gave up? Because we don't drink. You know what we gave We do drink, but not this year. You know what we, what we, what we gave up? Coffee. You can't believe the withdrawal symptoms we got from not drinking coffee. We drink three cups of coffee before we wake up. We were serious, coffee alcoholics. I'm telling you, we gave it up. A couple of years ago when we did the fast, Estelle and I did a 40-day fast. It was moeilijk. But when we gave it up, we gave coffee up as well. The first day, I got such a migraine that I puked from pain. 
So you think that you can show fingers at an alcoholic. Go and look at your own life. Go and look at stuff that you think that is just come see, come saw. Anything that takes more prevalence than the Lord God in your life, go and look at that thing. Maybe you need to spend some time seeing how you can make that Vicky Minner. Okay. Can I <laughs> conclude on a more positive note? The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. When you have that migraine or you have that pain or you see somebody is sick, that's, that's not lack of man. But here's the good news. At the end of it all, it's life eternal. It's life eternal. I want to see Judah one day in heaven. And ek en jy boete, ons gaan, ons gaan sing, ons gaan die Heere sy naam groot maak, ons gaan hom loof en ons gaan hom prijs. And my sons, my daughters, my wife, Jelle, Scotty, Jan, Kovi, Amal van Jelle, Keith, Michelle, we're going to do it. And it's forever and ever and ever and ever. No judicial batteries. No nothing. But it's going to cost us. We stout now we Excuse. Amal! <laughs> Germin, jy is specifiek, want ons gaan sing, maar jy gaan die Heere loof en prijs met jou dans, ne? en, en Michelle met die vlag is, en daar die, man, ons gaan heel dag, jy sit nog nachtmal ook hou, so, allemaal by name, die Heere ken jylle, ek wil net sê, geseene kers wees vir allemaal, rarig, jylle moet machtig gaan, ris, machtig ris, vind tyd, om dit te doen, skakel af, en terwijl jy dit doen, en jy stol raak, vraag die Heere, Show me my heart, Lord. En as ons volgende jaar terugkom, laat daar een eenheid in hierdie kerk wees, soos nog nooit tevore nie. Hier is eenheid, hier is liefde, maar ek sê laat daar meer wees, that we can come back washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. Is dit nie iets exciting nie, man? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Is dit recht so? Ek gaan Kobe vraag, asjeblief, as jy nie omgee, Kobe, om die nachtmaal te bedien, hy sal dier die, dier die hele ding gaan. God seen jylle, met die keer van die seeninge, en het was wonderlik om jylle vandag hier te sien, en in Mari en, en uh, Janse afwezigheid vir hulle ook, les jylle hoor, en na die tyd, daar is teen koffie daarachter. Die, die hakens van ons voorbereid, asjeblief.